So that, that component gets hot, boy. Like, real hot. Hello and welcome to My Man the Maker. Today we're going to be hopefully repairing Wino, the Fritzy wine cooler that had two suspect capacitors over here. There's one, two, uh, which I put replacements in and it did not fix the problem. So I'm going to put the original ones back. And then we have this transistor, which I believe is the problem although I'm not sure, uh, but so cheap to fix, I'm just going to replace it and we'll see how that works out. And this board is the control board for many, many different types of wine coolers, so I should be able to um, get it up and running one way or another. But the idea right now is to just solder in three components, capacitor one, capacitor two, and this funky three-legged, what turned out to be a dual diode. It's part of the power supply. And I think it's what the problem is because the, um, the thing that's dying out on this board is the high, high, high current to the piezoelectric assembly. It's a little um, thermoelectric assembly within the wine cooler that acts as a solid-state refrigerator. It brings the temperature down and I can tell you that it runs on uh, <clears throat> I think it runs on 12 volts but a very high amperage and this um, there's got to be a big step up to go from one amp at 230 volts coming in on uh, this side these two pins right here is the AC in right there and that moves through the primary here uh, get my tip here here's the primary and then here's a shield which is also a big heat sink and that diode there and this is the what I would probably call the low voltage area 12 volts 5 volts so on and so forth to run the fans and stuff. Here's lots of fan connectors and there's a thermo a, th a thermo, uh, is a thermocouple? I'm not quite sure. It's a thermal sensor for sure. A thermistor most likely that uh, tells the unit assembly here which is the logic side. There's a microcontroller lurking in here somewhere to uh, send power to the the piezoelectric uh, refrigerator, solid state refrigerator. And this diode is on the only thing on this side that looks like a power transistor. And there was a terrible buzzing sound, which made me think that maybe it had failed, so, or had gone marginal. The other thing that that can emit a buzzing sound is capacitors, but when I replaced the capacitors on the high voltage side the buzzing uh, did not go away so that led me to think about this component as the second so let's have a look at the component in question uh, here we go here's the old one here and here's the new one this cost about a quarter I think something like that so it's, it's, it's not an expensive component to, uh, to to buy so I bought a bunch and what I bought were, were STPS 2045 CTC the CTC is the package type so this is uh, it's got a tab on the back to mount to a heatsink and the um, this tab is connected to the center pin and um, I'm, I don't know if it needs to be uh, isolated or not. Let's have a look at the shield here. Shield doesn't seem to have any real connectivity to anything. What's over here? 
So it's looking like uh, it's flapping around here. There's nothing connecting it there. And then there's a couple of mount, a mount point or two. I think there's one mount point right there that's completely electrically isolated. And would that be it? Yeah. I'm thinking that's it. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's a big gap and there's nothing except for that pin there. And there should be a corresponding pin on this side, but they didn't put one in, which is kind of weird. If you look at the gap, it runs right down to the end of the board. So the, the only thing holding this shield in is one soldered, ice, electrically isolated solder point right there. So I'm guessing that that's a floater in terms of um, its electrical characteristics, but geez, you know, if that's going to be the ground, the drain, because it's a dual diode actually, so if that's going to be the drain, you don't want that coming into contact with any other component because it could theoretically ground out, and that might have been part of the reason why it started getting weird. But when you anchor the diode to the heatsink, and that is a massive heatsink, so that, that component gets hot, boy, like real hot. So that's the other reason why I think it's the one that failed, because something that needs that size of a heatsink is going to be a high-risk component, even if it costs a quarter. So the way this is set up is, as far as I remember, this is a dual diode with the um, the external components being the... Uh, oh, geez, do I remember? Let's just say it's got a common ground in the center pin and leave it at that. So it's supposed to rectify uh, or only allow power to travel in one direction. That's the purpose of a diode. Okay. So, what, sometimes this is reverse, but it's usually a very small amount. So I got a bunch of extra um, copies, I suppose you could say. Uh, I'm going to use one, because there's only one, and I'm going to make sure that the uh, serial numbers are all the same. That the one I pulled out is also a STPS2045CTC. And if it is, I test it with a meter. They both have the same um, common in the center. So I'm just hoping that this one baked out a little bit and by replacing it with this guy, the circuit will come back and I will uh, bring this cooler back to life. If not, this board I know I can get for about 15 bucks online. And I might just replace the entire board because I have so many other projects to get off the ground and Mrs. Maker is on my case to get this wine cooler out of here. She doesn't want it. I just took it on as a project and the next thing I do once I get it working is I'm going to move it out of here because we just don't go through as much wine as would require a 12 or 16 bottle wine cooler. We might go through a bottle of wine or two a month. So we're not drinking wine like we used to. We used to drink quite a bit more, but just lifestyles changed, and we don't. So that's about it. I'm going to get into fast-forward mode now, pop in those capacitors, pop in that transistor package diode, and uh, reassemble Wino, plug it in, and see if it behaves. See you on the other side. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider subscribing, giving me a like, and leaving me a comment. I really enjoy making these videos, and I want to know from you how I can make them better. The whole point of these videos is to demonstrate that if I can do something, you can do it too. Well, that's it for now. So long, and remember, keep making.